Good, uh, good morning. It's um, Friday morning. This uh, this lovely sunny day today. And we're back in the shed, and uh, it's going to be a short video. This one because um, there've been a few holdups with uh, the painting system that I'm trying to get going, which I'm going to show you anyway. Um, I've ordered a curing lamp off uh, Amazon, and uh, they turned around and said it ain't coming at all. And uh, I think it must be a Chinese thing, you know. It was supposed to have come a couple of days ago and then they said, oh, it's the next day. Now we're on Friday, I can't get one probably till Monday. Um, I have ordered another one. And the uh, shocky thing is I've got to wait, wait a week for a refund on my money that I paid for the first one that ain't come in. The shed's looking a bit more spacious. They've got a bit more space. We've got some benches outside and I'll show you that. It is, there's a bike under the cover, look, she's, she's all... She's all right, she's all right. No, you aren't coming to that. She's under cover. So this is the, uh, this is the new idea of the spray shed. And uh, I've got a few hooks up here and stuff. But it's just a cheap tent, cheap greenhouse that, uh, you know, you can get for about 50 quid. And I've got the, the table in here and electric supply, I've got a little heater just to try and get it warm in here if it's turning cold. Parts washers just to hold the hold the tent down because we've had a bit of wind. Got some sanding blocks there, it's getting a bit dusty in there so I'll give it a wipe out before we do any proper straight spraying. Uh, back in the shed. Um, yeah as I say we went to get some paints, this is the paints, it's the uh, RAL 3005, 3005 um, wine red. I've got the clears as well. I've got uh, six cans of clear, eight cans of the base coat. Um, I've got a feeling I haven't ordered enough high build. This is red high build, high build primer, which is pretty good. Um, I've done some parts with it with one can. I've got th well two left. And I've got to do the mud guard yet, um, which is out there in uh, in grey primer. I might give it a so I'll give it a coat of the red anyway, because uh, it's high build and it gives me a bit of tolerance for rubbing down. Got some masks. Got a new one in there. Um, to keep um, alternating those, you know, wear one and then wear the other one after, sort of thing. Uh, got the Panel white, which is actually a brand new, well, a full tin. I hadn't opened. I've had it years, so that was all good. Just a bit of rust on top, but she's still a full, full can, so that's good. We ain't got to get any of that. Uh, got the old tin of filler that I've got at the uh, lockup. Bit of hardness. Something's gone on there. Some right proper sticky stuff on the top of that lid. But anyway, it's all got on the hardener sachet as well. So <laughs> don't know what it is. Um, yeah, we've got tap rags, uh, paint prep wipes, which really doubles up with the panel wipe anyway. So, um, yeah, so I've painted the nacelle just under coat. It's had a good few coats and it's had a bit of filler on it where it needed it. And uh, I think it was just one of them little holes that are welded up on the side there. You can't see it now, but there was a hole there. And there was a slight, you know, we do a spot welding and there's just like half crescent left. Just a bit of that. So I filled that, treated it all. And uh, she's had plenty of coats on this inside and out. 
the fork shrouds these are the bits I want to get done pretty urgently really they're in undercoat as well good few coats on them bit of filling on one of those because I think it had been dropped on one side so I actually filled it all right I actually put this in the lathe and uh, rubbed it down as much as I could I couldn't couldn't turn it I couldn't rub it down where these ears are because it would have chopped my fingers off so but yeah done a fair bit in the lathe I think it might be that one because very slightly see this just could do with a little bit of I don't know where to get some super fine filler just for that uh, got the Dura blocks out never use I've had these for years never used them it's like um, tubular these are brilliant for curved surfaces you know and they bend and you can get them inside tubes or whatever um, you get a big one as well this is like a set and uh, there's a nice handle on that you know it's a nice grippable handle and another one at the back here which is like just a normal sort of rubbing down block the tank's going to be sorted out soon i've got to do the um tank sealer first and i've got a collar that had fell out from inside the cap I've got a um, braze in a collar that came out and uh, let's say do the tank sealer then I can start working on that but there's some nasty dents on that we've got to sort out so that's a job for another day not too fussed about that at the moment but while I am painting and I've got that awful looking uh, greenhouse outside we want that gone as soon as possible so um, it won't be long before I do the tank here's Millie hello Millie hello baby girl Hello baby girl, are you alright? Ah, yeah, she likes a bit of attention, eh? Eh, eh, who's, who's cheeky? Oh yes, <laughs> who's cheeky? You gonna say hello? You gonna say hello? Hey, Millie? I'm just having a look around, have a little inspection. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Ah. Who's cheeky? You can't go up there. Oh, there she goes, look. Exploring. Who's been a bit cheeky? You'll get all red dust on you if you come in here. Mind well, she might be good for wiping the shelves if I let her walk around. She might dust down for me a bit. I don't think your mum would like it very much if you went in pink, would she? But yeah, oh, don't, don't attack that. She don't mind being stroked, but you can't be heavy with her. You can't give her the rough. Like the other cats like the rough, you know, you get in there. But she likes it nice and gentle, don't you? Yes, yes, soft as you can. Yeah, oh, she loves it. Yes, yes. I'm gonna rub this down, the oil tank, or the dummy oil tank, should I say. That can be rubbed down and uh, get some etch primer on that, and a bit of gray primer, probably. Okay, so I've um, I've given it a guide coat, just a very light coat of black, and just uh, dry sanded with uh, 220 block. And uh, I feel it's not too bad actually. It's uh, there's a few bits here, but that's in the low spots there. But that's in the uh, bracket area of the bike, so the brackets cover those up anyway. Um, this is down the back of the bike. Um, right down the bottom so again it's the bracket sort of low spot there little low spot on that back edge so I can't actually feel it so uh, I think we're good to go I did notice off um, when I've done the back side as well it's just uh, I've just literally I'm not bothered about this too much I've give that a, a key that's all I've done I did have a little run there but we'll sort that out um, Put it down here. So this is the business end that you're going to see the most of, and uh, no real marks that I wouldn't expect to see anyway. You know, when you've got the the uh, turned over lip on the on the edge, little one there, which I might get some of that um, very fine filler and just drop a bit on that. But for now, uh, I reckon high build primer might get that out, so I might just give it a coat of that for now. Uh, first, I'm going to um, I'm going to give it a touch of um, etching primer because a few bits here that are at the bare metal stage still. But uh, yeah, a little light coat on them, and then we'll get the get the uh, give it a good coat of uh, the hard build red primer.
Yeah, so just looking at this, it's uh, got a line of uh, rust impregnations along the top of the dummy oil tank and it's quite deep. I've uh, tried machining it off with uh, the uh, finger file or the, what do they call it? But, um, and I've given it a couple of coats of um, Q-Rust Curious to see if I can get it out, but uh, it's not worked brilliantly so far. I mean, it's, it's getting it, but it's going to be a bit of work. This is. I don't want to use the tool too much because I don't want to put a flat spot in it. I know I'm going to have to fill it anyway, but the less damage, the better. So I think the thing to do now is to keep going with the curious and see if we can get that rust gone completely. Obviously, using a, a 60 grit sanding block as well will help you know, just to keep doing it at an angle and should be all right. Yeah. Mud guard is in red primer at the moment. Can I put some light on? Does that help? There's a bit. So um, that'll just want a bit of sanding down with probably 100 grit or something, um, 1000 grit or something, 800. And then we can get the base coat on that. Um, just working on the other pillar shroud, um, fork shroud. So say there is, uh, there's still some marks in it. I'll put a dust coat on for now. Look, there you go. You see, you can see it. Do it with the naked eye without even having to um, sand it down. So uh, I know that's there. So I'm gonna have to get the filler out again. Yeah. So I'm filming this on my phone. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Bye bye.